We're starting chapter eight, and this is all about recursion. Before, when we wanted to do things repetitively, we use loops, either while loops or for loops, and that was called an iterative solution, meaning you do something again and again inside of a loop. And what we're gonna do now is use recursion where you're gonna call a method itself. And that's gonna seem really weird at first, so we're gonna go over this first example very uh, slowly and carefully, and we're also going to use the debugger to see what's happening. We can go line by line while we execute. So I've already pasted this in, and my project's called Chapter 8, named after the chapter. Don't get too creative. So I got my countdown in here. I've already formatted it, Alt-Shift-F. Now if I run it, nothing's going to happen because I'm not calling the method because public static void main does nothing right now. So I'm gonna call countdown. And I'm gonna send it zero at first. And what should happen here, if you look, we're gonna send in zero for n. And so n should be zero, and we're just gonna print blast off. Else won't actually happen because n is equal to zero. So that's all that should occur. Hit play, boom, blast off, all right, done. All right, we're gonna debug now, all you need to do is left click the line you want to debug. I'm gonna left click the line on the entire method here. So now it's important that this is not here. Oh, I clicked to the left of it. All right, that should work. So now to actually debug, you need to click not the run project F6, but the debug project, which is control F5, or you can just hit this uh, button just to the right of run. Now what's happening, it already executed this line, which calls this method here, countdown. And you might think, oh, it should have paused right here on line 22. However, there's nothing that actually happens on line 22. So it pauses on the next line down. Now you have a bunch of extra controls up here. You could, you could stop it, pause, play, but we're going to step over, which is F8. Before we do that though, unfortunately, I don't know if I can make, there's variables down here below the output and I can't make them any bigger. Uh, so hopefully uh, you're running this and you can read them on your screen. They're really small on my screen, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think I can make them any bigger. So you see that there's n, it's an integer, and the value is zero. So that's exactly as we expected. So n equals zero. So I'm gonna hit the F8 step uh, over. It's gonna go to the next line. Now it hasn't executed this line. I know it hasn't executed this line because the output hasn't printed blast off yet. So I'm gonna hit step over one more time. And now blast off's on the screen, it uh, printed that. And then we hit the end of the method because remember it skipped all the else. So after blast off, what's the next thing? It finishes the method. And what happens after it finishes, it's gonna return, it's gonna come back to main and there's nothing else to do. And then it's just telling us it's finishing main right here. And you can hit step over again. And that's the end of our execution. So we just use the debugger there. Now let's do countdown one. This will be more interesting. And we're gonna use the debugger. So now we have int n, the value is one. You can actually modify values. I'm not gonna, I'm only gonna watch values here. I'm not gonna make changes to them. So n is not zero. So we're gonna step over. And this line is gonna execute next, step over again. All right, so now we can see that it printed out the value of one. But what's really important this line right here, it's going to call the countdown method. Now this is the recursion right here happening, the recursive step. It's going to call the countdown method, which is a little bit weird to think about at first, but it's going to call the method that we're inside already. So it's going to come back up here and we're going to hit the uh, step over and it's going to start the method all over. But now if you look, what's the value of n? Well, it was one, but we called countdown and we subtracted one from n. So now the value of n is zero. And we do a step 
over again. It's going to print blast off. And then because n is zero, we're done at this point. So it's just going to finish the execution. All right, let's get crazy go all the way up to three. Debug again. And we're just going to hit the uh, step over. And I want you to pay attention to the value here is three. I'll try to say it out loud so that uh, you don't have to squint and try to read that value there. You can adjust the size of these windows a little bit. The uh, output, there's not much output coming out here. And I don't need the debug value uh, variables to be that big. All right, so we're going to step here. So the value is three. We're going to print out a three. We're going to call countdown. Now what's going to happen, we're going to call to countdown with three minus one. So n should be two now. Notice the value is still three for n because it hasn't executed this line yet. However, when I step over, now the value of n is two. It also made it bold. I'm not exactly sure what the bold means, but it's okay. So n two is not equal to zero. So it's going to skip the blast off. So now it's going to print n, which should be two. You see it right here in the output. And now it's going to call countdown with two minus one, which is one. So you're going to see the value change to one down there. And we're going to step into one's not equal to zero. So it's going to print out one call countdown, but now countdown with one minus one, which is zero. So now n equals zero when I hit uh, step into. So it should print the n equals zero. And you'll see that it's, I got to scroll down, but it's this blast off right there. Uh, and then basically it's just going to wrap up, finish that method, and then come back to here. And that's the end of the uh, execution right there. So that's a three, two, one blast off. Now the textbook goes over this using, uh, this is called a stack trace right here. And every time it indents, it's the method calling itself one more time. And every time it out dents or unindents, it's the method finishing right here. Uh, so I'm going to skip this uh, new line stuff right here. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit regular play or run project without the uh, debugging. Now notice it never stopped at the debug uh, at the method breakpoint because those are only applicable when you're in the debug mode, which is this uh, debug project. So whenever you hit play or run project, it's gonna ignore all the breakpoints that you had and it's gonna run like normal. So you don't really need to worry about deleting these breakpoints. Of course you can, if you left click, they should disappear. So you left click once to set, left click again for it to disappear. There's other options. If you right click it, you can do other things. I don't want to get into that. Uh, so we're either going to set or unset and not do any of the other breakpoint options for now. So let's get a little crazy. Let's go to 10. So you can probably predict what's going to happen. It's going to print 10, take it down to nine, print nine, take it down to eight, et cetera, et cetera. We'll run it regular. Boom, 10 to one blast off. Now we're going to run it with a debugger. Now I could just hit the uh, step over a lot and it will just keep cycling through like it did before very slowly. There's a couple other options. The next one over uh, is step over expression. And I encourage you to, to play around with these a little bit to see what happens. Uh, step over expression is very similar to step over. Uh, let's see, there's step into, which goes into the method. I'm gonna do step out. Um, and that basically moves us out one block. Uh, so it basically skipped all this, and so it moved us out of this block, uh, which the end of the method was here, so it goes right up to here. Um, typically, when things are tricky, I recommend just hit step over, and you can hit step over very quickly and kind of watch it just go through, go through, go through like this, and I'm watching the value decrease down here. And let's finish that. There we go. So that's countdown right there with the debugger.